Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe. Now, former International Criminal Court Chief Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda will head the UN Commission of Inquiry into alleged human rights violations by all parties to the conflict in Ethiopia. The International Commission of Inquiry on Ethiopia that uh, she will lead was established for a period of one year. Its mandate is re renewable if uh, necessary by the Human Rights Council resolution on September, uh, December uh, the 17th. Since its outbreak in November 2020, the war which began in Tigray, northern Ethiopia, and then spread to the neighboring regions of Amhara and Afar, has been marked by numerous allegations of abuses on both sides. Last November, a joint report by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission documented possible war crimes and crimes against humanity in the conflict. The commission will be required to provide an oral update on its work during the 50th session of the Human Rights Council in June 2022 and a written report at the following session in September. The conflict between Ethiopian government forces and rebels in Tigray has left thousands dead, more than two million displaced and hundreds of thousands of Ethiopians in near starvation conditions. Well, some analysis on this. We're now joined by Dr. Innocent Badasu, who's an international law expert. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Good to talk to you again. It's been a while. Yes, thank you so much. I've been around the world. <laughs> My wow. apologies for not being available oh, for some no, time it, now. It's, it's good to have you. Um, so this inquiry, um, getting somebody like uh, Fatou Ben Souda, I suppose, is quite a big win given where she's coming from. Uh, yes, obviously, um, she has an admirable uh, credentials on the international scene in relation to uh, international criminal and, if you like, uh, issues of prosecutions. And so, yes, it is a big choice. Uh, beyond her credentials also, you would have to look at the fact that she's an African. And being an African, the idea would be that you would have the Human Rights Council being able to push further the mm. argument that uh, it is part of sustaining African solutions to African problems. Uh, the idea would also be that um, with her personality, she would be able to negotiate access with the Ethiopian government because uh, that remains a very contentious issue as we speak now, uh, knowing the kinds of things that we know in relation to how the Ethiopian government and, and, and other Eritrean uh, authorities uh, who are all parties to the conflict are likely to, to, to respond to this new development. Yeah, access, that was uh, going to be my next question, actually. Uh, partly because, A, she's from the ICC. ICC doesn't have a great reputation in Africa, so there may be some baggage there. But also that it sounds as if both sides may be guilty of uh, abuses and that makes it difficult doesn't it to to try and get the right people to tell the story yes um, that is going to be a big challenge as as i indicated mm. um, government forces uh, have been uh, alleged to have committed uh, similar crimes if like crimes that are of international nature either war crimes or crimes against humanity and so uh, you need uh, that kind of cooperation to be able to uh, do your work and the mandate that has been given to the three-person uh, committee or the commission, if you like. What, what, is, what is worrying is already we have a situation where these whole new arrangements may create additional problems because already uh, some kind of uh, joint investigation uh, team has, has been around and they have been able to uh, talk to people to understand their story. So victims have spoken, survivors have spoken, and there is some good conclusion that he has all parties to the conflicts uh, have committed crimes that require the needed international mechanism to be able to bring justice to the survivors and the victims. So I do agree that indeed uh, access to um, some part of the country, access to the right individuals to be able to tell their story 
it's going to be quite uh, difficult for uh, the commission. How much do we know about the kind of power that this commission will have? I mean, will it be able to subpoena people, for example? Um, when we think of commissions of inquiry here in South Africa, we've got um, sort of a certain lens that we see their authority and their power. Is this the same for this commission of inquiry for uh, Ethiopia? Strangely, uh, you do not have that expressly stated in the resolution that mandated this uh, international, uh, uh, if you like, experts who are supposed to investigate uh, violations of human rights in relation to the situation in northern Ethiopia. If you look at the resolution, um, they've been given a mandate that is almost like uh, a commission of inquiry. But somehow I am curious that the name is not a commission of inquiry, but rather it's been considered as a a commission of experts on, on, on human rights. Mm. So to that extent, it's difficult to know how they operationalize their mandate on the ground. I sincerely do think that they may have to rely on the voluntary contribution, sorry, uh, cooperation of, of, of the Ethiopian government. They may have to rely on the voluntary participation of victims and survivors, uh, I, except in some exceptional circumstances. Uh, because, mind you, this is also not um, a clear case of a criminal investigation towards the purposes of prosecution. But we are having another form of wide-scale investigation to be able to arrive at a conclusion that, indeed, these international crimes have been committed and international humanitarian law has been violated by all the parties. So we need to arrive at a conclusion where evidence in, in search of accountability is, is almost irrefutable. And so I do not think that at the moment they have that power when you look at the resolution. However, if they begin to have challenges on the ground, they can always amend their modus operandi to be able to ensure that they get the right people to be able to arrive at the kinds of things that are needed to deal with issues of accountability in relation to the conflict in northern Ethiopia. Typically, what will happen to a Commission of Inquiry's report? Obviously, this report may end up being published. And so the first thing that would happen is that the international community get to know the truth. Part of the reasons why you send a fact-finding mission or Commission of Inquiry or uh, experts to a particular uh, area where you have a problem it's also for you to know the truth, because you have competing accounts, you have varied views, facts are being disputed. And so it kind of undermines what should be the position of the international community. Or it kind of confuses what should be the, the response of the international community. So first of all, we would come to a conclusion that indeed these particular kinds of human rights violations have occurred. These are the key individuals who are responsible. And recommendations would be made for the Human Rights Council to make an intervention. Now, those recommendations could be the basis for any other, um, if you like, interventions from the international legal community where we may even have the ICC either a referral or um, the state it's of submitting something I do not think would happen because Ethiopia is always averse to any international or foreign attempt to interfere in its uh, uh, domestic affairs and all of that. So what we need to appreciate would be that fundamentally, regardless of the difficulties that we have around this uh, uh, commission of experts on human rights in relation to Ethiopia, some amount of truth will be unraveled in relation to the situation. All right, so um, how high up could culpability go, do you think? I mean, could it reach the office of the prime minister? We have seen the situation where the prime minister at a point in time himself decided to be a combatant. Uh, he chose to be a, a troop commanding officer. And so at the moment, we have no idea the kind of things that he did when he was on the battlefield, the instructions that he gave, whether they amounted to torture, they amounted to gang rape, they amounted to all kinds of sexual 
abuses, whether they amounted to ethnic cleansing, we have no idea. And so we would need the independent uh, commission's work to unravel some of these things. It is possible that as, as a soldier in battle or troop commanding officer, he may have mm. issued some instructions that may have occasioned some kind of commissions of international crimes. And in that regard, obviously, when the evidence is, is made available, there can be some kind of culpability on the part of the prime minister. But that is also going to be a big, big challenge for the international community. Mm. From what you've seen so far and heard and uh, uh, read that's been reported, do you think war crimes have been committed? When you look at the joint investigation team's reports, there is an admission that there is the probability that war crimes have been committed, and there is also the probability that human uh, rights violations are of serious nature where they may amount to crimes against humanity. And so at the moment, we have a preliminary conclusion towards war crimes and crimes against humanity. What may help us would be this commission of inquiry, of course, it's not a commission of inquiry yeah. technically. <laughs> These experts on human rights would be able to indicate to us that indeed um, we have flagrant violations of international humanitarian law, which obviously may amount to war crimes. Yeah, I suppose in the end it's going to be how much they can prove, how much evidence they can get um, in a very difficult environment. Yes, the, the mandate has also um, indicated that they need to be able to gather evidence and preserve that evidence possibly towards prosecution. So uh, it would be very, very important that the right evidence are gathered and those evidence can meet the tests whenever uh, they are subjected to some kind of uh, prosecution, uh, either by the ICC or we may also be expecting that some kind of internal or if you like uh, national mechanisms may be uh, put in place to ensure that there is justice for the victim. So we may not only be looking at uh, justice at the international level, but we may also be looking at some kind of national efforts. Mm. We have no idea yet whether the Ethiopian authorities would be uh, open to a national mechanism like this, but uh, it would help for victims to be able to seek redress, either at the domestic level or at the international uh, mm. stage. This uh, inquiry, is it specifically about the Tigray conflict? Because we looking at a region that's had a lot of issues for a long period of time where other abuses may have and may still be taking place. Uh, is it quite specific to the Tigray region? Yes, it is specific and, and also the time period uh, has been uh, named as well. And so the mandate is clear as to what the commission uh, may have to do. Uh, I do not know if they get to the ground, they would also be able to indicate that, well, uh, we have found other issues that are of uh, interest and that are of uh, magnitude that required attention of the international community as well. If that happens, yes, then of course we may have a broader mandate. But for now, the resolution has given them a specific mandate, the time period of, of the occurrence of these uh, possible international crimes have been clearly stated. So I do expect the, the Commission of Experts on Human Rights on Ethiopia to be able to keep to that mandate. They can also come back, as, as required of them sometime in June, July, when the, the next section of the Human Rights Council to provide briefings. In their briefings, they may be able to indicate some of the challenges or some of the things that they, they have discovered which may be relevant for purposes of ensuring an inclusive justice mechanism. So I do agree with you. Yes, a lot of things have happened around the, the, the area that requires also some kind of an international uh, support and, and, and intervention. But at the moment, as I have indicated, we have a clear mandate that has been given to the commission. Uh, Dr. Innocent Vazasu, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Uh, great talking to you again. And uh, your insights, always, always appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.